These are two new 80 watt panel lights made by iFootage. This is the bi-color one and this is the full color. Before we get into it, to be transparent, this is a sponsored review. However, everything here is based on my own experience and my own opinion. So when you purchase both these lights, you'll get the same things. You'll get the panel light, you'll get barn doors, a diffusion panel, power cables, and a small soft case to put everything inside. Both these lights have a lot of the same features, so let's cover them now. Both lights are dimmable from zero to 100%. For color temperature range, the bi-color does 2700 to 6500 Kelvin. The full color also does 27 to 6500 Kelvin. However, it does have an expansion mode. The expansion mode allows you to set it up to 10,000 Kelvin and all the way down to 1400 Kelvin. Both lights can be controlled from the back of the light and also from the iFootage app. There are three ways to power these lights, the power cables that come with it, V-mount battery, or USB-C power. However, you will need a special cable in order for that to work. The USB-C port also allows for DMX control. For dimming curves, there are four different ones for both of these lights. Both lights are equipped with TIR lenses over each individual LED. This triples the illumination to make the lights brighter also at further distances, but just brighter in general. It takes it from a 120 degree angle, I believe, all the way down to about a 45. Both lights have a variety of special effects that you can control from the back of the light and also from the app. There is also green and magenta shift control, but this is only on the full color light panel, not the bi-color one. I do really like the build quality on these. They're made out of aluminum. Um, everything has has a really high quality feel to it. I don't imagine there's going to be any problems down the line. I would like to point out that the yoke system is actually quite nice. The handle is really easy to use, has a good size to it so that you can tighten it down and get that tilt angle where you want it to be. I'd also like to say I really love their ingenious way that they integrated the barn doors and diffusion together. Here on the top of the panel light, there's these two locking latches that you slide to release, and then you'll be able to pull the barn doors out or the diffusion. This makes it really easy to transition from soft light to hard light or control your light with the barn doors. But what I like most is that you can use them together nice and easily and you can lock them in place so that they don't move around and it takes up such a low profile that you're really not going to notice when the barn doors and diffusion are on the light. It might also be worth pointing out that on both of these, on the yoke on both sides at the bottom, there is a quarter 20 mounting point with RE locking pins so that if you need to mount something to the light, you have an easy way to do it. Speaking of mounting really briefly, this is a traditional yoke so that it goes on light stands and baby pins everywhere, but it's also a dual yoke so that if you need to mount it vertically like it is right now or horizontally, you can do that easily. Moving on to fan noise. Of course, that's one big issue that a lot of people have. I'm happy to say that these are really quiet. I've had them at 100% for several hours just to see how hot they get, what happens to them, do they turn off, are the fans too loud? And they're actually really good quite quiet. I, I have no complaints about them. There is three different fan modes and they allow you to have it in auto, quiet, or ultra quiet. However, you are limited in the output of the light if you choose quiet or ultra quiet. In quiet mode, you're limited to 70% output as your highest that you can go. And in ultra quiet, you are limited to 50% power. This goes for both of the lights. I really like that on both these lights, on the LCD screen, they show you the fans and how fast they're running with a number indication and they're constantly changing to show you um, if it's you know ramping up ramping down things like that it has kind of like a smart cooling technology so i hear and so i think it will automatically adjust even if you're in quiet mode if it starts feeling like the light's going to overheat it will bump those fans up for you basically it's trying to preserve itself so you know just keep that in mind i personally didn't deal with any overheating like i said i had them at 100 percent power for an extended period of time indoors now when it comes to light readings um i have still got to go ahead and do those readings. So let me go ahead and do that and put them up on the screen here for you. I'm gonna use my uh, Sekonix spectrometer. However, I do not have the latest one and so I can't get the SSI readings. If you're interested in those, I do believe other YouTubers are reviewing and hopefully using their spectrometers to get readings on the light. But I hear that these are some of the most color accurate ones on the market that you're ever going to find. One of the positive things I think about both these lights is that there are three different ways to power them, which having multiple powering options is really helpful helpful, especially if you're going to travel with these and you want to be light or maybe they just don't have a power outlet nearby. So it is great that it has V-mount and USB-C power. However, I would say it's a con that the USB-C cable that you have to use for this has to have 
a 100 watt power delivery. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test this because I don't have a 100 watt power delivery USB-C cable. I think the way you can control the light from the app and from the back of it are pretty easy, straightforward, smooth. I haven't had any issues with it. However, one of the things I don't like is that in order to save presets for these lights, so if you come up with a color combination that you wanna use often or again and again, you can only do this from the app. The app is really neat that it lets you save presets and a whole bunch of them, and then take those presets and turn them into a scene combination that you play so that if you want the lights to turn on and off in different color sequences and do something really unique, you can program that from the app. It's totally free. I did it, it's quite fun, but I will say it is kind of annoying that as far as presets are concerned, they're only able to be done inside the app, not from the back of the light. I think for some people, this is going to be a significant drawback, not being able to quickly get to their presets from the back of the light. Now there's something I wanna say about power cables. I think the power cables are just a little short. I wish they were a little bit longer. And the second thing is, is I wish that both these lights had uh, power cables that locked into the light. They don't, unfortunately, which means that someone trips or tugs on the cable by accident, it will just fly out of the light, your light will turn off. However, one of the features I love that both lights have is studio mode, which means that if someone unplugs the light by accident or even on purpose, all you have to do is plug the light back in, whether that's at the light head or into the outlet, and the light will come back on at the same settings it was at when it turned off. This is super helpful because it allows you to do so many things. You can hook all your lights up to a remote system, a physical remote that you just turn them all on in a studio situation or like I said, if they come unplugged by accident. I love it when lights do this. I think all of them should. It's unfortunate that it's not a locking pin. I, I do think every single light should have a locking pin. It's just a great safety feature. Now something that probably is nitpicky and borders on complaining, but it's really not a con as much as it's just like I wish companies would do this, so I might as well mention it. As much as it has three different ways to power these two lights, I do really wish that they were NPF as well. NPF is a little bit more travel friendly, especially if you're getting on a plane and going somewhere. I would love to see a light or these lights or anything like them that would have NPF, V-mount, traditional power supply, and then USB-C if they want to throw it in. Maybe that's me asking for everything, but when it comes to my overall thoughts or recommendation, I'm struggling a little bit because I automatically want to compare them to the Amaran P60s, which I do have. And so if you want me to compare these to the Amaran P60s, let me know down in the comments so that way I can work on that video. Trying to just evaluate these standalone, <laughs> I do think as far as like when you consider price and features and how they operate and how easy it is to work with and what I like and don't like about them, my evaluation of both these lights is that they're good. Good colors, great design and build quality out of these things, really sturdy. I like the power options, even though I do wish for NPF, of course. There's really nothing I can think of that's worth hating about these. When it comes to price tag, which is really big for some people, I would say the bi-color one is priced a little high, especially when you compare it to other ones that exist out there. But the color one here is priced competitively to ones that are similar to it out there. I do think if iFootage wanted to make these more attractive, they could drop both of them just a little bit in price and they would probably make them a little bit of a no-brainer for some people. Of course, that's for you to decide if you think these lights are worth investing in. Like I said, I'll link them down below. They are affiliate links, but you can also get a discount 10% off. And if you have any questions or if you want that comparison video, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. I love hearing from every single one of you. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and I'll see you in the next one.